Good, thank you. I mean, it's great to have the momentum and be back here two months later. <laughs> you spoke about how you were surprised at how Ekaterina was able to use her range this time around. Is that why you started off slow in the first round? Yeah, I mean, I feel like with all my fights, I, I kind of start off a bit slow to kind of see what I'm working with. But I definitely was a bit slower this time around trying to find my range. And she did a great job keeping me at bay. Now, speaking about that, this one championship Super Series rule set is a three minute, three round rule. Is that something you need to get used to? Um, you know, and back in, in the States, in the amateur, in my amateur fights, they're all pretty much three rounds also. So I'm, I'm used to the, to the pacing, but this time around, I think I, I had to pick it up a bit more. I started off a bit slow. I think if this fight were to go five rounds, it, it would have been better. I wouldn't have a more clear shot as to, to who won. It wouldn't be as so close. Jackie, we got questions from the media now. This first one is from Conan Altatis of Conan Daily. Conan, the floor is yours. Conan, can you hear us? Yes, hello, Jackie. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, right after the announcement of uh, the decision, it looks like Ekaterina was uh, shaking her head. <laughs> um, were you able to talk to her after the fight? No, I wasn't able to talk to her after the fight. We were, you know, exited out pretty quickly. Hello. Hi, G. Can you hear me? Hello. Conan, are you still with us? Uh, do, you, do you agree that it was a very close fight? Yeah, I, I agree it was a close fight, but I do think I was able to pick it up, especially in the last round, and score more shots that actually landed. I feel even though maybe she had a bit, I have to rewatch the fight. I'm going off of what I remember, but I feel like she may have had been throwing more, but I was missing a whole lot of her shots, whereas the shots I was throwing were landing. So I think that was the, the greater factor. All right, congratulations, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Conan. Our next question will go to Leon Jennings of Asian Persuasion MMA. Hey Jackie, congratulations. Hi, thank you. Another, another fight's been over with. Was there a little bit of added pressure going into it after such an amazing debut performance? Yeah, I think there was some added pressure and I think all of that pressure was from me, myself, putting it on myself. <laughs> but um, I was able to kind of snap out of it pretty quickly. I think just having such a, a great debut, I wanted to make sure that I, I keep that momentum going. Have you spoke to Janet since 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 the fight? And if so, what did she what did she say? Yeah, I spoke with her. Um, she of course was excited and super proud to to see me doing what I love to be doing, especially on the big stage of one championship. Lastly, is there any stopping boxing works? You're between you and Janet. You're you want to tear in one championship? I don't think there's no anyone who can stop boxing works. <laughs> Great, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Leon. This next one will go to Ivan Stewart of Dugout Philippines. Ivan Stewart, please go ahead. All right. Good afternoon, Jackie. Okay. So, in connection to Conan's question earlier, were you what were you were you surprised that the judges called it a majority decision for your win, or were you expecting to be more like unanimous or split? Um. I guess not really surprised because I do I I know it was a close fight. I um, you know, I feel like it could have went either way. But like I mentioned before, I think I scored the the clear shots that were landing, which helped me out and helped me out with the scorecards to go in my favor. So what's next? A world title shot, or what's going to happen down the line? Down the line. I, I have no idea, but one championship knows I'm here to get some new bling around my ways. So however many fights they want to give me, I'm in no rush, but I'm looking for that one world title shot, definitely. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Jenny. Thank, thank you. you.
This next one will go to Kevin Estrada of Burn Sport. Kevin, are you with us? Yes, I am. Please uh, go Jack, ahead. Jackie might ask about that. Uh, you having a hard time with Barbie being taller than you. Uh, so you really had to get in close. So how do you how do you sense that? How do you sense her vulnerabilities throughout the fight? Um, you know, coming into the fight, we knew that she had a greater height advantage over me, especially with like Wonder Girl. Wonder Girl was taller, but Ekaterina is a lot taller. Um, so we, I did practice that throughout my camp, but Ekaterina definitely changed it up a bit, played it smart with keeping me at bay, not getting into my punching range. So whenever I would come in, she'd either have something waiting for me or she'd back out to where I couldn't score my shots. Uh, a follow-up question: uh, Are you, are you kind of watch the upcoming All Women Fight Card in One Empower? Although it's MMA and not the Super Series, uh, are you excited for that card? Oh, definitely. I mean, especially having a Grand Prix with all women. Who who can't be a fan of that? And my final question: On who do you want to pick among the eight of them, if you had that choice? Oh, man, that's a good question. I think I'd have to go with Stamp, you know. She she looked good at her last MMA bout, and I'm a fan of hers, so I, I'd hope she'd take the win. Okay. Thanks, Gianni. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie, this next one is from Phil Starr. The question is this. You're representing the U.S., but you're also Filipino. Do you see yourself also bannering the Philippines in MMA? How does that part of your heritage motivate you to do well in the circle? Um, I will not be doing MMA, only Muay Thai. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I was born and raised in the U.S., which is why I represent the, the United States. But I'm Filipino. I have Filipino blood in me and my, my sisters and parents were all born there. So it feels amazing having the Filipino nation rocking behind me. It feels great. It definitely adds on to my confidence um, as a fighter. There's a large roster of Filipino mixed martial artists in one championship. Do you follow any of them? I don't follow any of them. I know some of them, though, but I know most of them are kind of like the MMA and the MMA um, game versus like the Super Series. All right. We got this next question from my MMA news. Dylan Bowker, you're up. Hey there, I appreciate the time. I'm just kind of curious here with this sophomore effort here, just one where you were able to adapt and make the adjustments. Is that in a way almost more satisfying than the debut effort just because you were able to show the fight IQ and overall ability? Um, I think so. I mean, I, I can say I was definitely, sorry, I think I can say I was definitely more, you know, happy with my performance, my debut, but I was definitely also happy with this performance because like you said, I was able to adjust, even though it was in the later rounds, I was able to adjust and, and score more and get the win. And also you were referencing aspirations earlier for garnering some gold. I'm curious, has one communicated to you any path towards a world title from here on out at all? Um, they haven't. Like, I know my division's still fairly new, the straw weight division. So I'm not really sure how it's all going to go down. But I think I'm making it clear I'm a serious contender in that division and that, you know, I think I'll be up for a title shot sooner than later, I hope. Yeah, you definitely underscored that. And I appreciate the time, Jackie. Thank you. Jackie, talk to us about the game plan. It seemed to me like you were circling away from the power side and you're trying to get your punches going with your inside leg kick. Yeah, so, um, you know, I have a lot of confidence in my speed and my footwork and power. And I really, I knew, we knew coming into this fight, those would be the greater factors. And um, with her previous bout with Janet, she pretty much threw the same thing as she threw with me in this fight, like that overhand right to left kick. She was throwing a lot of those, so I just we had to make sure that I wasn't circling or going into that to my left, going into her right hand. Um, but I think that my feints and footwork were able to to get her, especially like the second and later rounds, and that kind of helped open up certain shots for me. Um, I was still having trouble finding my range, so I wasn't landing as much volume as I wanted as compared to my last fight, but I was able to adjust and 
get a little bit more up close towards the end of the rounds. Yeah, talk to us about what your coach told you towards the second and the third rounds. It looked like he t told you something and you really picked it up from there. Yeah, he was <laughs> he was actually referencing. He was just saying, you got to go Rod Tang on her. You know, Rod Tang style. Yeah. It's like guard up and just go straight in, you know, because it was very close. So I'm a, I'm a counter fighter, a technical fighter. I don't really do that too much. But I knew that it was a close fight and I had to pick it up. So I pretty much had to listen to him, of course. And it's funny, like, of course, he knows what he's talking about, right? So I, that definitely helped me out, just being able to rush in with my guard up high and score my shots. Your team, Boxing Works, has found a lot of success recently. Can you talk us through the whole process? When you get an opponent, do you go through film together? And then when you spar, when you train together, do you specify for that one opponent? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, like I mentioned before, I don't really like to watch too much tape on my opponents. I just think I'll get too much into my head and overthink. But um, my, my coach will probably send, he'll, or he'll definitely send us a, some of their previous bouts. And if we want to watch it, we could watch it. He, of course, watches it all and he comes up with that game plan. And then we work together. We're like, okay, look, he tells us this is what's going to work. I know it's going to work. So we pretty much work that throughout the whole camp and make sure it's coming out and the times it's supposed to come out, especially during sparring. Talk to us about the whole amateur scene in America where you and Janet Chan herself are a big part of. Do you guys still actively help out in that area? Yeah, I mean, as of right now, there's, there's no amateur fights going on in California due to COVID, but they're starting to open up in different um, states in the U.S. So a lot of people are able to get work out in the tournaments. And I, we have one of my teammates, actually, she's competing in an amateur tournament later this week. So we definitely love to always help out the, the amateur team and other amateur fighters outside of boxing arts because we were them, you know, before. Now, I got to ask you about your training partner, Janet Todd. You guys seem to be very close. What's next for her? Have you guys talked about it? Uh, we haven't talked about it. I know, you know, she's looking for that Muay Thai belt, which I believe, I, I don't know yet, but I believe she'll be up for that shot soon, given her last win which was a fantastic win um I don't know if they're gonna go through the route of giving her that Muay Thai title shot next or defending her kickboxing belt next but whatever it is I know she's gonna be ready for it talk to us about this travel situation that you got to fly in you're flying back to San Diego was it, is it San Diego where you guys are based Los Angeles Los okay. Angeles has it been hard to get over that jet lag when you compete do you feel that uh, no, not really. It's funny, like coming here, I'm able to adjust fairly quickly. It's always like going back home where I feel like a zombie. I get super jet lag when I go back home to LA. But coming here to Singapore, I'm able to adjust um, pretty well. I don't really have problems with it. Big victory for you. How do you celebrate it after this win? Um, I ate some brioche French toast. That was the best way I could <laughs> celebrate it, especially during a quarantine. <laughs> All right. One more question before we let you go. When you get home to LA, what are you doing? Oh man, I'm just going to have a chill day. I know I arrived back Saturday night. So just in time for Sunday brunch, I live by the beach. So I'll be able to walk my dog with my boyfriend and just have a, a Sunday where I don't have to worry about, you know, my diet or training or recovery. I could just sleep in, eat and be a homebody. <laughs> What's the first thing you're going to eat when you get home? Oh, man, you know, being in California, I've been craving tacos. So tacos are definitely the number one thing I'm going to get when I land back. <laughs> Jackie, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations again. We'll see you soon.